Hey guys, it's Max. We just got in the brand new 2020 MacBook Air. And in this video, we not only are gonna run some benchmarks to see how well it performs, both in CPU and graphics tests, but we're also gonna be testing out thermal throttling. I know some of you guys have been asking about that. And that is because Apple now gives us a four core option in the new MacBook Air and better graphics as well. Now, another thing we're gonna figure out is if the i5 model, which only costs $100 more than the base model, comes with the same graphics graphics as the base or does it have the faster G7 graphics of the i7 version which is another $150 and we're going to cross our fingers and hope so because that's going to make this an awesome value. Now one thing that I already noticed is that it is quite warm on the bottom of the MacBook Air and all I've really done is just download my testing apps which is very interesting. I want to let you guys also know that I will be doing a direct comparison against the previous MacBook Air and the base 13 inch MacBook Pro that has a quad core processor. So that's gonna be very interesting. Make sure you guys are subscribed with those notifications enabled. Let's go ahead and turn on our Geekbench 5 here. Okay, and yes! <laughs> so <laughs> if you guys see right there, Intel Core i5, we have the G7 graphics. Okay, that's a big sigh of relief because this means that pretty much everybody could save 150 bucks. If this um, laptop, the i5 version, had the quad core but not the best graphics, then it may be worth spending another 150 to get those best graphics, especially if you wanna do like video editing, stuff like that. But thankfully, yes, we have the G7 graphics on this i5 model. That's gonna make this MacBook Air an even better deal for most of you guys. 100 bucks more than the base, you get twice the, uh, the CPU cores and you get the better graphics. Man, I, I think this laptop's gonna be very popular and I'll go ahead and link it down in the video description as well. Let's go ahead and start out with the CPU test. All right, here are the results. So we have 1,010 for single core score and 2,573 for multi-core. So that's about a 25% boost in single core performance. And that brings it up to all the new modern Macs, even like the Mac Pro for single core tasks. Now I'm looking at my uh, kind of estimations of what the multi-core performance would be. And I have to say that I did overestimate a bit, but I wanna take a little bit of a closer look if we're gonna take a look at temps and fans because I didn't hear the fan at all. And yes, this does have a fan in it. Before I look at that, let's go ahead and run a compute score with that new graphics, I'll uh, hit metal here. All right, we have our score here. It is 8,228. The previous one, here's a 617, 3,148. So more than twice as much, nearing three times the graphics performance. Um, that is really good. Now I'm also gonna be testing a gaming benchmark, but we will come back to that later. Now I wanna open up TG Fan Pro. So right now we're idling at about 70 degrees Celsius, which is on the warmer side. And this is surprising. It says that our fan speeds go up to 8,000 RPM. And clearly that hasn't been happening in these benchmarks. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens as we start up our Cinebench R20. And Cinebench R20 is gonna push all of these cores to their limits. And we're really gonna see the maximum CPU CPU performance, but also we're gonna stress it and give it the maximum heat to see if the fan can keep up now that it's a four core instead of a dual core. So Intel Power Gadget is gonna show us wattage as well. And the base frequency for the CPU is 1.1 gigahertz and goes up to 3.5. So I'm curious, what is it gonna actually run at when we're pushing it and will it thermal throttle. So two gigahertz right here, 2.7, 2.4, 2.3, but our core max actually is showing higher. Only 13 watts right now, and that is not high at all. So we are not having a U-series processor that could go up to say 25 watts. So this is definitely a four core that is meant for energy efficiency number one. And if you guys are paying attention, we're running at 1.57, 1.58 gigahertz now for um, all of our cores running at maximum and 100 degrees Celsius. That is crazy, 99, 100. So this thing is getting hot and yes, it is thermal throttling. It could run at at least 2.4, with all the cores. Of course, that 3.5 rating is just with one core if it's cool until it tries to kind of stretch out those numbers. But now as we're maybe about a third done, we're using about 10 watts. It's trying to keep it cool, 100 degrees Celsius and 1.47 
gigahertz. Uh, that is pretty slow. And as far as the fan speeds, I don't know if I can even hear it. And it says we're actually running at 4,000 RPM instead of 8,000. So let's go ahead and open up our TG Fan Pro here. Yeah, look, we're actually running very, very low here, maybe about a third and it's running at 100 degrees. So with the 16 inch MacBook Pro, Apple is really trying to keep that cool. The fans get louder, but this thing, they're just trying to lower the power usage to keep it uh, running, not even cool, keep it running hot. So let, let me do this. Okay, can you guys hear that? 8,000 RPM, that's loud. Let's see what happens to our temps here. Okay, so nothing's changed yet. It's very loud, but the temps are staying. Now, if you guys saw some teardowns of the previous MacBook Air, there's a fan in here, but it's not really connected directly to the heatsink. So I'm gonna be very curious opening up this MacBook Air and seeing if they changed anything. And that will be in my direct comparison to the previous MacBook Air, which we will have coming out very soon. So make sure your notifications are enabled. So it looks like even though the fans spin loud, we're not getting much benefit here, a very, very slight benefit. So now it makes sense why uh, Apple is basically not kicking up those fans by themselves, allowing it just to run hot because it doesn't seem like it does that much. So we just finished up here and we got a score of 863 for the CPU for maxing everything out. Now I have to be honest with you guys and say that this scenario is not realistic at all in the real world. Even if you're doing things like video editing, especially with programs like Final Cut, where in that case, a lot of times your CPU is running between 10%, 20, maybe 50 sometimes, and it's spiking up and down. So it's not like it's 100% CPU load maxed out. And the newer programs actually focus way more on graphics, which is why I'm so glad that this MacBook Air has that G7 graphics. Now, when you're doing simple tasks, like say opening up a web browser, Right there, just hit 3.3 gigahertz. And that's where you guys see the heat's not really going up here. It's staying right over here. It's not getting super hot. And we're getting that power to do stuff very quickly. Let's open up Geekbench 5. Bam. So you guys see we're getting a spike in power, spike in performance. It's a little spike in heat, but it goes right back down. Let's do maybe a little bit of a tougher one over here. We'll open up Cinebench. And as you guys saw, it actually spiked, looks like 3.5 gigahertz when we were opening up this tougher program. The only time I really see the CPU being completely maxed out consistently is when I'm transcoding footage, say from some regular codec to ProRes to make it easier to edit. Uh, but with this MacBook Air, it actually has the latest decoding chips, even better than my Mac Pro because it's a 10th generation processor. So a lot of those, the footage, say even 10-bit H.265, that's a special chip that will decode that and make it easier to video edit. So that's why I'm excited to test out video editing on this machine as well and see how it can keep up up with that better graphics card. So now let's go ahead and open up our Unigen Heaven and we will do a graphics test. So I'm running the Extreme preset here and it looks like we're running at about seven, eight, nine FPS, sometimes higher. The GPU temperature says it's at 83 degrees Celsius. All right, we have our results. The FPS is 8.3. That definitely isn't very good. Now, I don't know how well the other MacBook Air did. I don't think we ever tested it because it obviously was not meant for, you know, gaming or, you know, video editing, photo editing, that kind of stuff. And now we actually have better graphics, better CPU. So this might be able to do some of that. So we will be doing a direct comparison, not only against the MacBook Air, but also against the base 13 inch MacBook Pro. I know that laptop has better cooling than this, but this should have better graphics as well. So it's gonna be interesting seeing some real world tests, not just some benchmarks. So make sure you guys have those notifications enabled. Now, what is my overall concern? Consensus. Well, yes, the MacBook Air does thermal throttle, unfortunately. Um, I guess they probably didn't change the heatsink inside of here. And for regular tasks, it does hit that 3.2, even 3.5 gigahertz, and everything is very snappy uh, with this machine. So if you're gonna be using it for web browsing, maybe some photo editing, some lighter video editing, where you're not maxing everything out constantly, it should actually do a pretty decent job. Uh, but if you're gonna be doing something like you're pushing gaming to the max, 
or you're uh, you know doing full CPU tasks that max it out all the time, which I don't know how much of you guys will do that with this machine. Let me know down in the comment section below. In that case, it might be better to go for that 13 inch MacBook Pro, but we'll have to see in that comparison video. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, click that little circle above to subscribe. And if you guys wanna see some of our other videos, we have a couple great ones right over there. This one, Max, and I will see you in the next video.